We build a lot of different types of PCs here on the channel. Of course, we build gaming systems, but we also do video editing PCs. We build small systems and enormous ones. We build normal rectangular boxes and ones that look like helicopters, I guess. But one thing that we've never done here is an HTPC. So today, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna find out if the Inwin B1 is actually the perfect HTPC enclosure. Let's get started. If you guys are new here, we do PC builds every single week. There are different price targets and performance targets. We do different form factors and different use cases. If you wanna see something, make sure to leave a comment down below. I take a lot of my ideas from your suggestions. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and if this video helped you out at all, that like button. Thanks guys, let's get right to the video. Like I touched on in the intro, we're gonna be building a home theater PC today, or an HTPC. Now, HTPCs, if you're not familiar, are a little bit different from your stereotypical gaming PC. They have to fit in with a home theater setup, so you're typically gonna see these in a living room next to a TV or in a media rack. So they have to be smaller, they have to be aesthetically pleasing to fit in with a living room setup. They're not just gonna get shoved under a desk like a gaming PC might. And typically you're not gonna see these completely blinged out with RGB because that would distract from the living room television setup. So today we're gonna to be using Inwin's brand new B1 chassis to build what I think is going to be my perfect HTPC. Now, it's not going to be everybody's perfect HTPC because very specifically, there is no discrete graphics in here. Now we saw the B1 at CES this year and this is the first time that I've had a chance to get my hands on one and build a system in it. It's really interesting because it is a very unique form factor. You could either lay it down like I have it right now or it comes with a stand that you could stand it up and it fits in kind of like a console might. But it looks pretty cool. It's got a glass top panel. However, it's not big enough to hold a graphics card or rather it's not laid out to hold a graphics card. This system is actually about the same size as the mini PC that we built a couple of weeks ago that can fit a discrete GPU. This one can't, but it comes with its own power supply, so hopefully we shouldn't have any of the noise issues that we had with that build, and the cooling should probably be a little bit better as well. Now, for a CPU, because we have no discrete graphics, we have to use something that has an uh, iGPU, and that's gonna be the Ryzen 5 3400G. This comes with Vega graphics built in, and it is a four core, eight thread chip, so it should be really good for media consumption, streaming, storage, etc. Also, we should be able to probably play some esports titles. We're gonna test that out. I'm not sure exactly what kind of resolution or settings, honestly, we're gonna be able to use, but it should be able to at least play lower end games if we want it to. However, this is not going to be a build that's specifically targeted at playing high resolution, high frame rate, high fidelity games on a large living room display. That's just not what we're going for here. The motherboard that we're gonna be pairing with the 3400G is from Gigabyte. It's the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. Now, I have used this motherboard in builds before, and to be honest, what I really would have preferred is if we had a B550 mini ITX board to use here. However, even though those are coming, we don't have them yet, or at least we can't use them yet. So maybe in the future, that's something that you could look at and I'll update this video's description with some links to some boards that might actually be more economical and more balanced for this kind of a setup. However, for now, this is unfortunately what we do have to use and it's still a great board. It's still gonna do a really good job kind of an overkill solution for our 3400G. To cool our CPU, we're not gonna use the stock cooler because it is too tall to fit in this case. Instead, we're gonna use the Shruken 2 from Scythe. This is a super low profile cooler. It's only something along the lines of 60 millimeters tall or something like that. It's also configured in such a way that it does not block any of our memory slots. So no clearance issues here and won't interfere with the top glass panel of our case. For memory, we're going with a two by eight gig kit from Zadek. Now, I do not have a link 
that you could buy this in the United States. Zadok sent this over to me along with a cooler that we're gonna take a look at at a different time. And I did wanna get this in a build because they do look pretty cool. And from what I understand, they're not overly expensive. However, finding them for purchase in the United States is a problem. So I'm gonna leave a link to these down below where you could find them on the manufacturer site. And then I'm gonna leave a link to a similar kit of memory that might work well in this build. The thing that's gonna differentiate our HTPC from a lot of others is that we're going to really go for it on storage. This case is laid out so that you can use whatever M.2 solutions you have on your motherboard and additionally up to two 2.5 inch drives, which is unusual for a case of this size. But Inwin configured it knowing that it was gonna be used for HTPC setups. And a lot of times those need a lot of storage for all the media that they're gonna hold. So we are going to take advantage of that. We're gonna use a one terabyte NVMe drive for our operating system and maybe some games or something. But we're also gonna install two 2.5 inch SATA SSDs to use for mass storage. So we have a two terabyte Crucial and a one terabyte Western digital drive. So three terabytes of SSD mass storage that we're gonna be able to put in this case and really not worry about running out of room. So is this build going to be the ideal HTPC? For me, yeah, it is. Because I'm not gonna be playing 4K games on my living room television. If I want a game, I come down to my office and I play on my editing PC, which is honestly much better at it. But for some people, I understand that they want a discrete graphics card in their home theater setup, so perhaps this one isn't gonna be for them. Still, I think it's gonna be a really good HTPC solution. And with this case, I think it's gonna look really cool too. So let's put it together and see what kind of gaming performance we can expect out of our APU and this setup and see how it looks when we're all done. So what do I think of this guy, our little InWin B1 project? Well, to be honest with you, it came out really well. I think that for an HTPC, this is a great case. 
with the caveat that you don't plan on doing any heavy duty gaming that requires a discrete graphics card. So the fact that this comes with a stand and you could stand it up like it is now or lay it down on these cool chrome feet is a really nice feature. The glass top smoked so that it doesn't show too much but maybe a little bit of accent lighting here and there is also really well thought out and then the build process in this case was super super easy the hot swap drive bays at the bottom make things really quick to set up and it's basically just set up your motherboard drop it in here and hit the power button and that's really all you need to do it was a very quick build and i had absolutely no problems with it now Circling back to that no graphics card thing. I did play some games just to test out some of the gaming performance. Uh, tested four eSports style titles. CSGO, as you probably would expect, ran the best. I was running this at 1080p high quality. Frame rates were mostly in the 80s and 90s, which I guess for a competitive CSGO player is not fast enough. For me, that performance is absolutely fine. I don't need anything crazy out of my CSGO and I, I didn't mind playing in the 80s and 90s as far as frame rate goes. For me, playing at 80 or 90 FPS in a game like this is perfectly acceptable. I am by no means a professional. I understand that professionals need faster frame rates, but I don't and it was still a very playable, very enjoyable experience at 1080p. Rocket League, we played this at 1600 by 900. I was playing around with resolutions and this seemed to be the best compromise between uh, resolution and performance. It wasn't running particularly fast, just in the low 40s, but because of the style of game that this is, that Rocket League is, it was still very playable and very fun. And I don't think this needs to run at 240 frames per second to be enjoyable. Rocket League is just, is just a good time. I also played some Overwatch. Now, I did have to turn this down to 720p to get some good frame rates, but we were up in the 60s and 70s playing Overwatch. And again, I didn't have any particular issue with this kind of performance. I think the bigger issue here is the fact that you do have to turn it down to 720p in order to achieve this. So for some, that might be a deal breaker. But the fact is that the 3400G is not a monster gaming CPU. It has integrated Vega graphics, which allows you to play games if you want. But if you are a gamer and need that faster frame rate or that higher resolution, then obviously this isn't what you're gonna choose. So you just have to make that decision for yourself. Fortnite, I tried out, was not a great experience. Mainly was running in the high 40s to mid 50s as far as frames per second, and that was at 720p, and I died pretty quickly. So uh, Fortnite, not great, but again, that is, I guess, a newer title. It requires a little bit beefier hardware, but the other three, I think, were fine. So if this is something that interests you, you'd be able to play some, you know, lower-end esports games, at, you know, at acceptable frame rates, and then use this for mainly what it was meant for, which is media consumption. And the fact that there is so much storage in here means that you won't have to worry about running out of space. Temperatures were a little bit weird, Afterburner was reporting our GPU, in quotes, temperatures over 90 C. I think this is likely a reporting error of some kind. Uh, the CPU temperatures themselves were just, it was in the 70s. So uh, I think that, you know, given that this isn't a very power hungry CPU and the fact that there are uh, m uh, multiple airflow options, air airflow pathways in here, including a built-in fan to, for exhaust, I think that that's fine for this kind of setup. I wouldn't put something like a 10900K in here. I think that would be a little silly, but something like a 3400G is right at home. And like I said, temperatures in the 70s or so. So what do you guys think of our HTPC build? Is this enough for you in your living room or do you need something with a little more horsepower? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another build next week.